Martin almost said the best man, and, and that would be true, of course. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Martin. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to try and read this. I'm not read this yet. Um, we had a rather late night last night, so <laughs> there might be spelling mistakes, but I'll be able to see them. You, you want to help some mime it? Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, I just want to say that doesn't Mrs. Gower look beautiful? Yeah. 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 A funny thing happened on the way to the colonies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just standing here. I'm gobsmacked. I mean, how did this happen? I, I, I never imagined I'd be standing here with this very heavy ring on my fingers. <laughs> really, um, when can I take it off? <laughs> <laughs> I think Martin had a lighter in his pocket. He deliberately heated it. Before, so, yes, it's burning. Um, <clears throat> I remember... Uh, many years ago, my good friend and best man, Martin, uh, he, he, he called me just after I'd arrived in, in, in America, and he, he asked me, so, so Johnny, I, I need to know this, uh, have you gone native yet? <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what he meant by this, but I suppose if I answered him then, it would be native? How very dare you, I'm British through and through. But uh, today, after successfully wooing and marrying the most beautiful of all natives, <laughs> my wife Jenny, or Titicaca as I like to call her, <laughs> <laughs> when she's not in the room. <laughs> um, so today my response would be uh, quite different to that. In fact, I'd probably say, HELL YEAH! <laughs> So I believe it was uh, George Bernard Shaw who said of Britain and America that we are two countries separated by a common language. Uh, I thought we were separated by the Atlantic, but I, I went not it. In many ways, it is, it is so true. Um, for example, uh, you say aluminum, and we say aluminium. Uh, you say route, and we say root. Uh, you say patronizing, and I say, I think you'll find it's called patronizing. So, I need some water. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, all of this, when, when you first arrive off the boat, as it were, in, in the US of A, um, it, it can and often does lead to confusion and misunderstandings. <laughs> For example, I've probably only been in the US for maybe a couple of weeks when, when Jack, my, uh, my right-hand man, and I we found ourselves in probably at a, at a craft convention out of town. So, <laughs> craft, yes. Yes, it was. No, crocheting, actually. <laughs> um, so I thought it might be a good opportunity to get to know him over a beer <clears throat> that evening, and I'm sure he wanted to suss out his new boss. So, as we're chatting away, um, a picture of Bob Dylan appeared on the television screen. Uh, you know, you know that shot, bedraggled with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, you know, that sort of black and white pig. Well, we too were smoking at the time. I'm, I'm sorry, Mum. <laughs> and I, I told Jack how my parents hated smoking, uh, that I was very wary of being photographed, you know, in the act, if, if, if ever should get back to them. So, innocently, I asked Jack if he had ever had a picture taken of him with a fag hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> This literally broke his brain. <laughs> he attempted to analyze way too many things simultaneously. You know, questions were whirring around his mind like, is this a trick question? Or, what does he mean by fag? Um, is my new boss hitting on me? Um, and how far would I go to keep my job? <laughs> and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and after what felt like an eternity, he answered, no, not really. <laughs> uh, of course, at this point,
when I twigged that fag had a different meaning in the U.S. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if his answer was in response to the American definition. Uh, suffice to say, we both hastily made our excuses and backed out of the room. <laughs> uh, in, an, in, in an ironic twist of fate, this uncomfortable event actually had a direct bearing um, on Jenny and I getting together. Because Jack and I, both still confused about each other's meaning in the bag in the mouth incident, we proceeded to brush it under the carpet as if it never happened. <laughs> But in an effort to demonstrate his red-blooded heterosexual nature now to me, at every opportunity he started to point out attractive women with a nudge and a wink wink, kind of say no more, say no more. <laughs> Obviously he was concerned that I might think him not only gay, with a keen interest in photography, <laughs> but also I might have misconstrued his non-committal answer of no, not really, to be that he may or may not have an interest in me, should I ever ask, of course. <laughs> so a few weeks later, while we were meeting in my office, <coughs> spreadsheets, Jack suddenly says, he turns to me and goes, wow, check out those buns. She's definitely the, the office hottie. So, uh, of course, I refuse to look, as I have strong morals about the objectification of women. <laughs> now I do, as of this <laughs> Uh, but the grunts of approval on the occasional, ah, oh, damn, <laughs> eventually piqued my interest. And I turned to see this thing of beauty leaning over a desk outside my office. <laughs> Jack, I said, if there's one rule I live by, no fraternizing in the office. <laughs> All right, that was clearly bullshit. <laughs> Get the picture. <laughs> and I turned back to the expression. Uh, uh, actually, Jack, hold on a sec. Um, that office hottie, as you put it, uh, just for HR purposes, of course. So, you know, what's her name? <laughs> well, that's Jenny, and she's a southern belle. And she almost certainly is, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. And so our romance began. And being a good company man, of course, it would not have been proper to start dating whilst we were working together. Um, and rather fortuitously for me, Jenny's job of future soon became extinct. I may or may not have had something to do with that, but I'm reading the Fifth Amendment on that. Uh, we knew that this would be something special, so we decided not to rush into things and, you know, wait to become intimate. So I'm sure you'll all uh, accept our excuses if we leave immediately after the toast. Uh, it's been two years and you have some mercy on us. 